Welcome to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, where world-changing spiritual entrepreneurs come to deeply awaken the power within to bring forth their greatest purpose, to create massive awakened impact for millions of souls around the planet while enjoying being in tune with all life and real wealth in all aspects of their lives. I'm your host, Daniel John Hanneman. And hello, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you. And we have another amazing guest here on Spiritual Rockstar Podcast Show. And so I'm grateful for the opportunity to share this guest with you today so that you can remember that as easily as uh, the wings fly on a dragonfly, or, you know, we'll talk about that along the way, or as simple as anything is that you can observe in your every single awake moment. I mean, like literally like not like sleeping with your eyes closed at least, right? So that you can awaken, you can awaken, you can awaken in any moment. And that, I think that's kind of the gist of the, what we're gonna talk about and much more, a lot of juicy stuff, lots of juicy stuff, how the adversities we face, whether it be domestic violence or parental you know, parental stuff all over us or whatever, like invasion, parental invasion, or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> you know, everything's an opportunity to wake, and our guest is going to help you with that 1,000%. So we're going to get right into it in a moment. Do you want to meditate and make money? Let it be simple. Let it be easy. Let it be fun. Go to yoursacredpurpose.com and get your free meditate, make money meditation today. Okay, well, um, looking forward to getting started, but first, just to say hello. Hi, Dr. Marty. Well, hi, Daniel. Thanks for having me on Spiritual Rockstar. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, I'm so grateful for you and what you're up to. And just listening to your uh, your stories a little bit so far and getting to know you. And then also hearing about, you know, these, uh, all the, the, the people that you're impacting by sharing your story and uh, going to get on these uh, big stages with hundreds or thousands of people around and all that kind of stuff. It's, it's exciting. So I'm grateful to share you today. So what we're going to do is uh, let everybody know a little bit more about you first, and then we'll dive in. So Dr. Marnie Hill Fodero is, is an award-winning educator and celebrated author. She earned her doctorate in education and completed postdoctoral studies at Harvard but she's not messing around, okay? After a very successful and rewarding 35-year career as a high school teacher with 12 years as a, a university adjunct professor, Marnie's life was forever changed after experiencing numerous spiritually transformative encounters, prompting her to write the 2020 Best Books award-winning spiritual fiction book, God Came to My Garage Sale which is promptly endorsed by James Redfield, best-selling author of the Celestine Prophecy series, uh, celebrity psychic mediums, founders of IANDS, International Associate of Near-Death Studies. Marnie was born in the South, raised her children in the Midwest, lives in the Caribbean. And in addition to her speaking engagements of various writing endeavors on uh, embracing spirituality after surviving trauma, Marnie is a contributing author to numerous anthology books and much more. So I'm just happy again to have you here. So Dr. Marnie, that was interesting. Yeah, you had reached out uh, to, to me actually. And you're like, hey, we used to be neighbors. I was right down the street from where you live, kind of, you know, like pretty much, pretty was, much. You you were you're in McHenry, Illinois, and I raised my family in Fox River Grove, Barrington area. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just uh, 20, 30 minutes at the most, or whatever, something like right, that. Not too right. far. Small, it's a small world after all, right? Like that song Absolutely. goes like anybody who's been on that ride, you can't get that song out of your, your head. If you've right, ever right. had one on the ride, especially it's a small world. And right, <laughs> goes yeah. your head. It's that magical uh, trance they put you in there, you know? So, uh, but yeah, we're, we're in a lot of different kind of trance states, right? In this, uh, in this lifetime. And I think it's interesting that you speak at um, conferences where people have had near death experiences Mm -hmm. And yet you're, you know, that you would be invited to go speak at these uh, particular venues. Um, so can you tell us about a little bit about that? Because, uh, you know, to my knowledge and my memory, I don't think you said you, you necessarily have had that, but 
Um, but yet you've you've had such an awakening, uh, so many different experiences of this deep awakening. So tell us a little bit about, you know, you've got this background as a teacher, you're a postdoc from Harvard, very smart person. Um, what led you down this pathway to all this mumbo jumbo, <laughs> you know, that people call just mega woo or whatever, right? Like what led you down like when, when everything seems so practical and like uh, bottom line probably in the in the past much more so so tell us your about your journey well definitely and actually i look at myself as just an everyday person you know just uh just so similar to so many other people mm -hmm. um i did not have a foundation in spirituality or religion so i didn't have that blind faith that so many people are raised with um, I, I grew up atheist, um, but definitely with um, an appreciation and love of humanity and nature and the wonder of it all. And, you know, early on, I, I was a questioning person and that continued and actually still continues, you know, even though I've had some life changing experiences, um, it, it seems that maybe I'm conditioned this way that I want proof. I want evidence. I want another, yet another example to just confirm everything for me. So, um, so I was going along, you know, um, uh, raising my family um, in the Chicago suburbs. Like you mentioned with the intro, I was a high school teacher at Palatine High School for uh, 35 years. Um, with 12 of those years as an adjunct. So I actually uh, drove to Northern Illinois University several times a week um, to teach graduate school there. But um, anyway, I, I ended up, um, you know, after when I was close to retirement, um, I, you know, I ended up needing to leave a toxic situation. So I left a 27 year marriage and that's traumatic enough um, and it was a choice that was not easy to make, but it was also, I felt like I didn't really have a choice, um, you know, that it was almost made for me because I, I needed to, to be a role model for my children, you know, who were adults at the time. I, I also needed to stay true to my own values of honesty, goodness, love, you know, um, that, that type of thing. And that just wasn't resonating with the person that I was with, uh, the very different values. So it was traumatic. And then I, I actually, in the, the midst of this, lost an adult child to parental alienation, where they align, you know, with the abuser based on false accusations, lies, that type of thing. So, um, you know, it's called parental alienation. So, but anyway, I've always been a very positive and happy person, even despite challenges that are, are put in front of me, because I've always believed that any kind of adversity, um, any kind of uncomfortable situation is really put before you to grow as a person. And, you know, instead of taking these situations and being very negative and looking at it negatively, I actually look at it very positively and, you know, had a choice. I mean, do I, do I want to be negative or do I want to be positive? No, I'm, I'm a positive person. And I believe that there were a lot of ways that I could, you know, make sense of, of some of the things that I, that I and many other people, men and women, you know, have gone through. And uh, so I ended up having to have a garage sale, um, which you know in the Midwest, you know, that happens frequently. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's even year round, even in the winter. And so I had like, you know, um, yet another garage sale, but this one was a big one because I was really unloading not only the material remnants of my many, many years, you know, um, uh, living in a suburban home, um, you know, raising kids, you know, but I was also unloading memories and hopes and dreams and, and, you know, so it was a pretty emotional garage sale. But during this garage sale, I actually experienced tremendous miracles that were spiritual in nature. And 
you know, I had, I, I think when you go through some challenging situations, it's like your heart and soul is opened up to uh, that there's more to this earth than just what we believe. And I think with that opening, that awakening, I started to really pay attention to signs and synchronicities, not just the, the many situations that happened at the garage sale. Um, that prompted me to do a lot of research on near-death experiences. And like you said, I did not have a near-death experience. I did not die in a car accident or on an operating table or, you know, but I did experience such jolting loss that I, I it awakened like spiritually transformative encounters. And those are uh, talked about and celebrated and investigated with the IONS community, which is the International Association for Near Death Studies. Um, so that one of my largest speaking engagements, you know, was with the Chicago IONS. Um, so I am alongside with other people that have, you know, their lives have been changed by what they've experienced. So, so I was just compelled to write about it. Um, this, this is my book. It's, it's called God came to my garage sale. And, um, many of the experiences I had, or that I researched other people had, I, I kind of incorporated it all into a spiritual fiction. And, and, you know, I was, it's obviously resonated with a lot of people. The book is, is doing very well, but it, it also won the 2020 best books award, and it was endorsed by James Redfield, who, who wrote the Celestine Prophecy. And he doesn't, you know, endorse people lightly. And, um, you know, he really saw value in, in what I was saying, trying to even reach an audience that might not normally look into near-death experiences. But they might pick up a, a, a easy book to read, you know, a simple book that might spell out some things. And, uh, and I think that's what's been happening. Actually, I've gotten word you know, from numerous people that there are book clubs started with my book. Um, you know, part of it is it's an affordable book, you know, $3.99 for an e-version or $11.99 for the paperback. But it's, it's also very manageable to read um, uh, with the 13 different vignettes and stories. And so I, I've just been honored to know that there are book clubs in Indiana and New Jersey and in Los Angeles and just different places. So that's kind of cool. But that's my, my background and how I kind of was, a, you know, um, a, became aware that, that I needed to pay attention to the universe's signs and synchronicities. And, and I've been blown away. It's just, uh, um, just when I think that I'm gonna question something, another experience happens to just confirm, you know, you're on the right path. Yeah, that's, that's wonderful. I mean, I think that this is really helpful for, for, for people that are very spiritual and, you know, are connected, but that may experience, um, I'm not saying it's the same as what you're saying, but like may experience uh, doubts at times, like, well, well, Maybe this life's all there is. Maybe it's all a bunch of crap, all this woo stuff. And, you know, maybe all of a sudden they go, go into that space. And when things get challenged, I remember, um, I remember with one of my significant relationships in my life, like, and you, you're like, oh my God, you know, you have, you have like that twin flame feeling or whatever, like you think you're going to be with this person forever, maybe. And it's such a big love. It feels like, uh, well, it feels like everything at the time. Uh, you know, this is way, way back. But at the time, I was very into metaphysics and spirituality. And I just remember where, you know, when you're devastated by something, it, it, it's possible, I think, almost for any of us, like sometimes to get in a place where we might quest start questioning something, right? So I'm like, Oh, all this stuff, you know, everything I've read, it's all a bunch of garbage. And I, yeah, I remember having that thought and it was very fleeting. It was just like my mind spilling right. out real temporarily. And then I, I came right back right away. But, you know, it, it's tough, you know, when life presents challenges, it's tough. That's why I feel, I, I know that you do this and you, you talk about this, is it's important for us to 
be in that uh, practice of gratitude for everything because yeah, we're going to talk about the other ways of awakening, but when the challenges come to you, this is why I love people who are business owners, entrepreneurs, people that want to, you know, grow their business because it's challenge. It's not always so easy. Usually everybody's very challenged. It's sure. if not perpetually at some point, you know, and you might have the good days and the good times even for years, but you're going to reach cycles of challenges in that path for sure. And usually quite challenging. So, so in those times, like, that's where you have to constantly be given gratitude for everything. And I have a, for like myself, like I have a gratitude practice where I make sure I include gratitude for everything that might have, might have even challenged me slightly during the day. Like, okay, I'm grateful for that because that was important because whatever, like what I might have learned from it, you know, what I gained from it. And it's, and when you get in that habit, it becomes more reflexive and then we don't have that, um, we're less likely to start questioning everything all the time, right? So that's what I've noticed. I know you have a, a I seem to remember reading about that about you uh, somewhere in the notes that you have a, a, some sort of a practice of gratitude that's uh, important to you too. Is that right? Well, definitely, you know, and I think it's just sort of, um, you know, throughout the day, I, I don't have like necessarily, I, I know I wake up every day being very, very thankful for so many experiences, even though I'm alienated, you know, uh, for probably close to seven years now uh, from an adult child, I still am so very thankful that I had 20 years to experience motherhood and to, you know, and I can look back and, you know, no one's perfect, but it was um, a pretty wonderful experience, you know, and I believe that you know, I, um, there's not much I would go back and change. So even though there's adversity, I just try to look at it with a lens of gratitude and, mm -hmm. and, and thankfulness. Um, but I, I also just have a sense of wonder and appreciation for just small things, big things, everyday things. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I do, it was really hard for me to learn how to meditate at first uh, because my mind was always racing. It was hard to sort of, you know, I always had something to do or something that was, uh, you know, I, I needed to accomplish or, you know, a project I was working on. And so it was really hard to get into a zone of, of meditation. And I've slowly learned how to do that. And that's been extremely helpful because you really can tune in to, you know, I think when, when you can clear the clutter, you know, of your mind, you, you open up, you know, uh, room for um, other great things to come your way. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, that's something that I'm constantly talking about is the meditation. I talk about meditate, make money. That's, our, that's what we're constantly promoting here. Meditate, make money is, um, it's one of my free gifts and whatnot. But it's so important to to uh, have that foundation, and I love that you said it's been challenging for you to be able to establish that. Um, now, some of the things some people have told me about that, I mean, is just like, oh, you don't have time, you know, and then quickly we understand like right away, like that's just an excuse. Then people will say things like, well, my mind's too busy. I do better to meditate while I'm washing the dishes or doing something else, and I'm like, Okay, well, I couldn't meditate either, even for a minute, you know, when I first started one, but I feel like you should continue to get keep after it, right? So, right. And actually, so many of us have been conditioned, you know, to be almost proud of the overtasking that yeah. we have done, the multitasking, you know, right. how much can we fit in our plate during a day? And, you know, so, so really a good part of my life was like, wow, I was able to do this, 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 and this, isn't that so wonderful when really, um, we need to kind of get away from that and maybe be more mindful and present with the things that we are doing instead of, um, looking at quantity, let's look right. at quality of the time that we are spending, you know, uh, in our thoughts and activities. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. I mean, I wanted to kind of circle back to, uh, yeah, it is so important. I mean, I, I, and then I want to circle back to something we were talking about uh, earlier is, 
is yeah the again like again western civilization it's this idea of you know do 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 and usually the the doing though is not connected with to anything other than our mind saying okay we, we've got to survive we're going to thrive we've got to make something happen oh my god no go as fast as you can okay the microphone we're microwave oh my god the microwave is taking so long it's already been two seconds oh my god <laughs> <laughs> that's how a lot of us have come up right and it's like everything faster 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 so that's the industrial age kind of energy right it's like okay okay mass produce more and more and more and i guess it's been good like people in the in western culture i mean you know, there are hungry people there are some people starving but compared to the past not so much you know um in those areas at least so but so you also, up, it's good yeah. to make a conscious choice to be aware of that. And I was very, very fortunate that after I retired from teaching, and I was very busy teaching graduate school and tutoring, raising a family, you know, <laughs> busy, busy with many different endeavors. I'm very fortunate when I chose to retire to move to the Caribbean and I live in the rainforest overlooking the ocean and I'm surrounded by nature and I um, do not use an alarm clock. And I just kind of let nature, you know, wake me up when I, when I need to get going. And then a lot of what I do is immersed in nature and, and in creating, whether it's writing or, um, or, artwork or whatever I, you know, that type of thing. I spend time just in, in nature. And luckily I'm, you know, in the Caribbean, I am surrounded by such wonder and beauty. And so um, it, I always think, you know, boy, if I could have lived where I'm living now earlier on in my life, would it, would I have taken a different path? Because you are forced to slow down. I don't have a microwave. I don't have um, all these conveniences. In fact, living on an island, you know, you don't, you don't, a lot of the things we were accustomed to in the Chicago suburbs, you know, if we wanted anything, we could just go to the corner store and get it. That's not the case where I live now. So it's, um, I'm, I'm still very comfortable, um, you know, uh, living very comfortably, but at the same time, just with a greater appreciation for what I what I do have, but more of a a, a wonder for nature and and um, kind of honoring my interests and and who I am with um, just kind of a slower paced you know existence. Right, right. I mean, people think you know slow is gonna bring death or something like yeah you're gonna you're definitely not gonna produce enough because every we've been we are constantly to this day we're continuously pounded with the idea of work hard right it's mm -hmm. just work hard work hard work hard and uh and that's another subject we always talk about on here like right. okay you can work hard all you want but uh if it's not sustainable and you're miserable chances are you're gonna uh, experience outer failure as well eventually you know at some sure. point it's gonna all blow up on you it's what happens to a lot of people i don't say happens to everybody but you know pretty much everybody if they're honest like <laughs> the outer failure sure. eventually sure. so we have to i love that you have set yourself up to let go of things that would keep you disconnected from more of your essential nature uh, by immersing yourself in the environment you're in and getting rid of some of those things that's that's really incredible and i feel like the more we can irreducibly come from a being state we have the opportunity to see everything being provided for because the deepest abundance we have is that we're one with source i mean everybody's worried about all these stuff oh, do I have enough of a sex life? Do I have a good relationship? Do I have health? Do I have money? Do I have success? You know, you got source, all right? You, you got everything you really need at every moment. And then everything can be generated from there. Look at the incredible life you have. I mean, you yeah, everything's yeah. provided for. You get to, to uh, fly around when you want to and go to all do all these talks and everything. And, and that's- Yeah, I'm definitely living in abundance and, and living- <laughs> in a much better state of mind, uh, even with the losses that I've experienced, I yeah. just feel yeah. that I've just, I, I've been blessed and uh, I'm just so very thankful. 
And, um, you know, it's, it's, I'm definitely motivated when it comes to writing, though, I really am uh, very passionate about uh, being able to express uh, my thoughts, other people's thoughts, just in, in the written word. So that's been Mm -hmm. challenging, but it's also been very exciting. And, And I do believe, you know, some of the adversity that we go through wakes us up to some relationships or situations that really are not serving our higher purpose. And so actually it's, it's not a bad thing to let go of some people and situations because really it does make room for positive people of integrity, people with, you know, like-minded values, um, you know, to come into your life. And, uh, and, and it's, it's all part of the cycle. It's all part of the, the life lessons here on earth. Yeah, totally. Totally. And you making, you're making room. You said, Hey, I'm not on social media much because I'm yeah. busy focusing on doing what I really want to do, which is my writings and speaking and et cetera. Right. So, right. so I love that. You're not a slave to the idea. Like, like so, so many of the rest of us get into like, well, I gotta be on social media. I gotta do this. I gotta do that. I gotta be plugged into all this stuff. You're like, I don't think so. I, no, no. So I want to focus on, right? <laughs> right. Right. I follow who I'd like to follow. I listen to podcasts and I read books and, you know, things that I'm interested in that I think will help me grow or help me in my understanding. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I wanted to start what I was talking about earlier, just a little while ago, I was saying, I want to circle back to some of what we were talking about earlier, you were talking about. And I do want to spend some time because there are people that are uh, some people might look at your life and say, yeah, you're retired, didn't you? You probably got loads of money, you know, from, from your pension or whatever, you know, you're, you're mm-hmm. taken care of. No wonder you can do whatever you want. Right. And I have, uh, you know, I've had clients that have been in those kind of positions and, you know, people get that criticism that are in your position, like, well, yeah, you can do all that spiritual stuff now, you know, try out in my life or whatever, you know, and uh, they've got challenges of all sorts. So, um, so what, what you've dealt with, uh, the, you know, these different challenges like domestic violence and parent alienation, I use parent invasion to get started because that's how it is for some people like they experience yeah. that's a parent's parent invasion on their life. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, <laughs> so like, I mean, there's so many different challenges people could be experiencing that keep them from feeling like they can fulfill what they want to. They might say like, Hey, these two people are the problem. I can't get rid of them. I can't get free of this marriage. I can't move forward. Um, What are some of the things, you know, being that you've been in some of those situations, like what are some, what's some uh, advice you could give them to help them deepen their their awakening and to experience the freedom, maybe to free themselves of these things as well? That's that's a really good question. You know, um, I would like to comment though, though, you know, you're saying someone might be looking at my situation and say, well, she has a pension, she's doing fine and all of that. And that's, you know, I certainly understand that argument, but um, what they may not know, and I think people might look at other people and they really don't know their whole story um, at all. But I was, when, when I chose to leave a marriage after 27 years, um, I, I lost everything. Okay, so I lost material possessions, I lost money, I lost investments. Um, You know, I happen to be married to someone malevolent who, you know, really was very money motivated and uh, power hungry and not control and all of that. But like, you know, I I had worked so hard for all these years. I actually probably started working when I was 13 or 14 years old and didn't stop really. Um, And, you know, when I chose to leave that marriage, you know, um, I, I had to, I had to make the decision. I knew that there would be major consequences. I had no idea that the harassment and stalking and the legal threats and all that would continue years and years and years. It's actually still going on. Um, and that's pretty common for people that leave, you know, it's people that, that have abusive tendencies. But um, I believed our, 
home in Fox River Grove, you know, in this great neighborhood was paid off. I was told it was paid off for 10 years. And um, I had always, you know, I take ownership in that. I just trusted my spouse. I handed over my paychecks every month. And, you know, um, we, even when I worked other jobs, just, you know, handed it over, just kind of trusting that the my spouse would look out for our family. And that was not the case. He had other interests and other, other things he was spending our money on. So, so really I even lost my safety and security. I lost my shelter. I lost my, you know, food, you know, basically transportation, you know, all sorts of things. I, yes, I did have a job and, you know, I um, still had a couple years to continue before I retired and that they had some challenges just because I was left with nothing. But the one thing I'd like to share with your viewers and listeners is that I, I think what really got me through was just believing in source, believing in God or divine, you know, kind of letting it go to a higher power and just realizing that I will be okay, that, that there are people that have it much worse than I do. We can always compare ourselves to other people. And um, sometimes, especially with parental alienation, you know, looking at other people's situations um, that are much more devastating than mine helps ground me and helps me realize, well, I have so much to be thankful for because I didn't experience this. Like, for example, I didn't leave when the kids were younger and I didn't have to go through custody battles and all of that kind of thing. I mean, what I went through is still devastating, but you know, I, there's, there's always people that have it kind of worse than you do. And, but I just think one big message is to just you know, realize that we're, we're on this journey. And even though we might've lost everything or we don't feel that we have the capability to change careers or, or to um, get out of a toxic situation, we really do have that. We, we, we need to develop our strength and, you know, really hone in to what your core values are. You know, what is it that that you're passionate about and what, you know, my core values with honesty, goodness, and love um, have been my core values forever. I haven't changed them at all, but I realize that I've let people into my life that don't have those same core values. So change is hard. Change is hard for anyone. And sometimes it's thrust upon you and you don't have a choice. And sometimes you do have a choice, but either way, you know, realize that that the universe, God, source has your back and that if you can let go of some of the control and just trust that goodness will prevail, um, it's amazing. I just believe that that it does, you know, so it's I, I'm a testament to it because I really could have been in a, you know, I was in a very dark place, but I could have let that, you know, um, uh, fuel my responses or my reactions or or it, it could have brought me to a real negative place but that that's not who I am and that's and, and thank goodness I I'm on this journey this quest you know for uh, and, and I've been given so many confirmations you know over the years that that I'm really on the right path spiritually. So for me, this really works for me. I really, and I really believe that, you know, our voices matter, whether it's speaking up about some of the challenges we've been through or whether it's uh, writing about spiritual experiences that we've had. Either way, even if it reaches just one person, you know, you're making a difference in that one person's life to have them kind of question their path that they're on and their journey and their belief systems. Yeah. It's very I, rewarding. I, yeah. Yeah. I love that. I mean, sometimes people get so probably caught up in whatever their life currently seems to be that it seems, just seems like, again, it's easy to be in a place that, oh, it'll never change, you know, all those usually usual ideas. But I feel like the stories that I, I, 
here of people seeing things change, like let's say if it's domestic violence or any incredible situation, what it is is like, you're right. I mean, you're connected with source, you're connected with God. And when you're available for grace to take over and to, to present um, a miracle for something to open up and for things to shift, an opportunity to, to make a clear choice from a state of grace, like, hey, I just, I don't know, I'm just, I'm just getting this feeling like I can, I can do this, I can take these next steps, whatever they may be. Right. And that's where I always hear the success stories. Like, I don't know, one day it's just like I prayed and then all of a sudden I got this feeling like do this, do that, or whatever, like stories like that. And then right, all right. of a sudden things start changing and you're like, oh my God, I thought I'd never be out of that situation. And once we can stop being in that swirl in our head and um, concerns and worries, which is tough. It's really tough sometimes, right? That's why the meditate, meditating is really helpful and doing yep. praying and whatever we can to come to, to our, into our center, which mm -hmm. is possible in any such situation, I feel, almost any situation. Mm -hmm. I would say any situation. I don't know for a fact because I've never been in every situation, but I want to say, I think almost every situation and that we can cultivate it at least. And allow those miracles to unfold in our lives and anyway so that's what came up for me when you were talking about that is it's yeah. so true I mean I'm sure you you experience moments like that in, in the midst of some of your adversity right I mean and like, sometimes it's when you least expect it yeah. sometimes when you know like you can witness something and you know it's not like you planned it or you were looking for it it just happened and mm -hmm. The, the thing is to pay attention to it. And I realize now um, after having so many experiences, I can look back in my life to when I was a, a child or a teenager or a young adult, you know, I can look back to many different situations that really were miracles, but I didn't pay attention to them. It's just like the red flags, you know, people say, why, why didn't you leave? your marriage sooner than 27 years. I wasn't paying attention to the red flags. I wasn't paying attention to these things. I was busy working full time, raising my family. And, you know, there's a, a great amount of gaslighting that goes on when you're in an abusive situation. So you start losing your focus, your confidence, you know, you question yourself. Did I really see that? Or did that really happen? And, you know, you just plug along. But I think, you know, sometimes things happen in your life that just force you to have to stop and pay attention. You know, people that have had near-death experiences, that's an example where you're just forced. You're, you know, you, you flatlined, you left this <laughs> earth. And, and, you know, that's pretty life-changing to be able to come back. Um, and, and, you know, so that forces you to have to reevaluate where you're at and what you're doing. And, and so I would say these experiences sometimes just happen without you knowing, but what's different now is I'm really paying attention to them. Um, you know, I'm really connecting the dots. Sometimes I feel I'm stretching it sometimes like, okay, I hear a song on the radio and I'll connect that to someone I was just thinking about, you know, and I might think, well, I'm just kind of stretching it. I'm pushing these two things together when really they may not be correlated. But then another song will come on the radio and yet another one and another one all connected to this person I might be thinking about. And, and then it's kind of like, all right, okay, I'm getting the message. Okay, I'm paying attention. You know, thank you for, for showing me again, you know. Yeah, and I think we get so attached to how, like in your situation, you're still dealing with all these things. Right? Oh, yeah. Like it's over. Like, oh, but well, she's free of it now. Hallelujah. She's the oh, no. story. Hallelujah. It's all done on the outer level. No, abusers are abusers yeah. are like predators, you know, and you're like the prey. And so they don't want to give you up easily. It doesn't matter if they've moved on, which you know, both of us have. There's just a real need. Um you know, and it's, it's, you know, that's a condition, it's a disorder on the other person's part, you know, to, that, that they, that it's difficult for them to, to move on. They need to keep an image, like almost a false mask. In fact, that, that the, 
next series of books I'm writing are, are True Deceit, False Love. And, and each of the four books in the series has a person with a mask on, you know, true deceit, false love. Because, you know, a lot of these, you know, abusers um, do it so subtly, but they wear different masks. They can be a different person as a leader of a company, you know, controlling a lot of people underneath them and kind of being the, the head honcho and, you know, um, they try to do things to make themselves look upstanding in the community. I think even for some of them, just having a family, they're not necessarily interested in the family, but they like how it looks right. on the outside. Yeah, they yeah, like yeah. that that kind of public persona. And, um, but they can be very different people behind closed doors. And so that's why, you know, when, when your listeners view different people, you know, you really don't know their entire story, right, right. you know, so you, you need to kind of be open and, and, you know, understand that there's people are multifaceted and have, you know, not everyone wants to talk about challenges that they've had, you know, right. um, it's, it's part of my story. So it's, um, you know, it's important to share that I've been through some, some devastating situations and traumas and, and even just losing everything material wise to, to kind of show others that, yeah, you can come out on the other side. You really can. Right. Right. I mean, yeah. So, I mean, you're a living testament to that. Like, okay, I lost everything now what's next? I mean, that happens often in all different situations. People sure. are going a divorce and uh, it could be a woman or a man, the woman or a man or whatever. Um, I lost everything to my spouse, you know, it depends on the dynamics of the marriage, right? Like they, sure. they got everything. I had to start all over again. Um, but hopefully you don't lose yourself. So if you can keep mm -hmm. yourself intact and mm -hmm. I, I just somehow my whole life, uh, no matter what I've gone through, I, I still have had a strong sense of, of who I am. It might've been clouded different times. I, I might've, you know, allowed other people to, to control me or control my situation. But when it all comes down to it, I, I, am someone who believes in the goodness of things so right 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 and and you've always had that um mm -hmm. that in you now that is a kind that is, you have grown and evolve and awaken more and more deeply and all that stuff but that i can feel like in your center that's that's who you are right you've yeah, always yeah. believed in that and that has its strengths uh again like every gift we have it has its pluses and minuses in a way sure. in terms of our experience of our life right like oh my gosh i mean some of some of the negatives could be that i'm an over giver right so, you know if if instead of just helping someone out and buying them a cup of coffee i, I want to buy them you know um their breakfast and go to the grocery store and get them groceries you right, know right. so well, i well, i have a tendency right. <laughs> i have a tendency to to over give I have a tendency to um, be open and trust that other people are are good and have good intentions. And I have still found out the hard way with different relationships, not just you know a marriage, but just with other kinds of relationships or situations that that's not always the case. Not everyone comes from a place of love and and empathy and goodness. And, uh, but I don't necessarily want to change who I am to accommodate the negative. Right. I, I just have to be more discerning about who I led in my life and, and how I use my time and what, how I want to, you know, get involved with people and things. So right. I just have to be, you know, more discerning and, and change a little bit about, you know, how I respond to certain things. Absolutely. Absolutely. I did want to talk about, um, there's so much we could talk about. We didn't oh, sure. To the parent alienation thing is a huge story. We could spend half an hour easily on that alone, <laughs> talking about that and how all the impact of that. Maybe we'll do, we could always do another show someday, maybe, who knows. But um, but anyway, um, but yeah, I mean, no. so these are the, so when we look at challenges, we use some of your challenges is a sort of a, a way of looking at like, well, how do you respond to it? I mean, the challenges don't end. I mean, we are perpetually connected to 
paradise um, perpetually. It's always there. It's always available. It's always a like even today, like uh, just nothing huge, but just like, oh, I just felt tired so much of the day. And I'm just like, oh my God, I actually have to do an interview today. And not that I wasn't looking forward to being with you, Marty, but I'm just like, oh, I'm tired though. Right, right. And then, and then, but as you just keep staying um, with things, it's like, yeah, but I know once I get in the interview, I'm gonna be fully energized. You know, mm -hmm. I know, I know myself, you know, I know that that's gonna be true. So when, when we allow ourselves, like when you're in a bad situation or you're bad and you feel like this sense of uh, so-called bad situation, so-called bad energy or whatever, um, you know, I find like if you will set your intention, like, hey, this isn't going to last, you know, you're clear about that. It won't. It won't last. So that's the thing. The cycles of ups and downs are going to come. They won't last if as long as you they won't last probably anyway but like if you're clear about it, if you get clear about it, it just won't last i'll set time a time limit on it too like if i'm feeling down like hey by the end of the day no way or whatever the next hour whatever you know whatever interests me but what i'm trying to point to here marty i think you're really connected to is why i'm presencing this is we're living a perpetual paradise on earth, even though on a um, psychological, mental, emotional level, we may, may feel like we're li living in hell, you know, like sometimes, not all the time, maybe, but like sometimes, right? So it's like, no, but we have to realize there's a different, there's a, when we get into the deeper level and we awaken, wow, look at the paradise that's actually been here all along. And there's a beauty Definitely. to everything at some level, right? There's a beauty. Definitely. And I think our perspectives are huge here. So instead of saying, oh, I have to do this, why don't you change the way you say it and say, I am fortunate I get to do this. Right. You know, I, I get the opportunity, you know, to, to clean this, you know, or fix this. You know, some people don't have that opportunity. Right. And so, you know, I think sometimes just our perspectives on things, like, for example, I've, I've, it's kind of weird, but I've always loved doing laundry. Okay. And there are people I know that just dread it like, oh, here, I have to do laundry. But I, first of all, I enjoy it, you know, but at the same time, I look at it like, wow, how fortunate am I that, you know, um, not only do I get to do laundry, I have a washing machine and a dryer, and too, right? Yeah. Uh, right. And so there are people in this world that don't have a washing machine. And I'm so yeah. fortunate to be able to be able to do this. So I think sometimes that's just one example, but I think sometimes our perspectives on what we have to face, like you said, you were tired today. Oh, I've got to do an interview, you know, and that type of thing. And you knew you would be fine once you got going. But I, our perspectives is, wow, how fortunate that we can, you know, connect in cyber world like this. People yeah. can be across the world and communicate with each other. What a, what a blessing and what an opportunity. And, you know, so I think our perspectives have a, have a lot to do with that. And, and, and some of that does come with just stopping, stopping the world, you know, as we know it in, in our minds and, and just going back to our core values and being, you know, um, the sense of wonder of everything being, you know, look at things even through a child's eyes where it's just amazing. You know, there's so many beautiful things, you know, just the colors, the, the textures, the, um, just so many different things. Yeah. Right, right. And I wanted to, that, that's a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about next, which is you've had these, um, like so many of us, I'm sure that li are listening, have had like so many deep, beautiful, mystical or whatever, these deep uh, awakening experiences. I mean, even everybody's had it. Even if you say like, yeah, you know, that one time I looked at that sunset, oh my God, it's so beautiful. That's an awakening moment. I mean, that is huge. I mean, that's, that's really yeah. being that connected state. So but you, uh, you know, between the two of us, we could fill, maybe we should talk about it. We should, could fill volumes of books between me, you and others, right? Of all these kind of awakening moments. Sure. Um, and I know you have a, a really cool story that I referenced earlier in the show uh, with dragonflies, for example. So I'd oh, love yeah. for us to share some of the fun stories, like 
the fun synchronistic things that can happen when you're living in this deeper connected awakened state that we're pointing into. So I'd love for you to share this. Sure. Well, the, the dragonfly experience, and I write about that in chapter one of God came to my garage sale. Um, and of course, I it's, it's a fictional story. So I embellish some things, but it's basically inspired by true events. And, and I was, you know, saying goodbye to this beautiful home, just, you know, uh, hanging out at the cul-de-sac, which is, you know, I, I took care of and put a bench there and planted flowers and did all sorts of things for, you know, 20 years. Um, and so I was at this cul-de-sac looking back at my home and I really kind of got into a deep state. I didn't plan on it. It just happened, but I got into a deep state of gratitude instead of being angry or resentful or uh, scared or all these other kinds of negative emotions. I just was filled with love and gratitude you know, grace, like you said. And so I was just being thankful. And when I did, all of a sudden, you know, a dragonfly came and circled me. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. But I didn't think too much of it. But then another one came by. And then it was like coming from down the, the road. Um, I lived on a cul-de-sac. And I could see from a long distance, I could see what turned out to be hundreds of dragonflies coming my way and circling me. Um, you know, it was almost so shocking that I didn't know what to think of it, but I, I, I couldn't ignore it. It was pretty profound. And uh, part of the experience, and, and I've had this numerous times with various other experiences, everything was in slow motion. And um, and I've heard of people that have had near-death experiences talk about how time just stands still and that, you know, time isn't like what we think of on earth. And so I've actually experienced that numerous times, but I would say that is one of the first, you know, maybe the second time that everything really was slow motion, so much so that I could see the veins and the wings of the dragonflies going by me. And normally on our earthly plane, phew, they whip around and you wouldn't be able to see that. But I saw details, the iridescent colors. I saw different sizes of dragonflies. I equated them with babies and toddlers and teenagers and grandparents. And, you know, I just felt like I was being surrounded. The feeling that I had when this was all happening was also something that I couldn't ignore where it was just like I was being surrounded with love and I was actually getting a message that Marnie you're going to be okay you know you're leaving this home you're leaving this life that you thought you know was going to be your forever life um but you know you're making a choice I could have definitely chosen to ignore the confessions that I heard and, and I could have just stayed along with this, but I couldn't, I mean, I, you know, in my being of who I am, I, there's no way I could have just stayed in that situation. I knew I had to go. Um, but this feeling with the dragonflies was just all encompassing. And then I since went on to have many other dragonfly experiences. Um, and I thought, well, am I the only person in the world that have had something like this? And I never really could look into, I didn't really probably take the time to look into other scenarios. And um, I believe it was that fall around Thanksgiving time, you know, I, well, I haven't had, you know, eight holidays, years of holidays with my children. I mean, my whole, whole, you know, I was very big into the holidays and doing all sorts of things with decorating and entertaining and all of that, just, you know, creating memories for my children. But this particular Thanksgiving was actually the start of uh, almost eight years of, of no holidays uh, with, with my children. So I had to kind of reinvent my life, reinvent my situation. A very good friend of mine and I, actually, he is my life partner now. We spent a lot of time and with each other and he's a very spiritual person himself. That's kind of great that I'm with someone who, you know, resonates with what I resonate with. But we ended up um, 
we we like to ski every every year and um it turns out uh, that particular year, there wasn't enough snow out in Utah for the places that we wanted to go to. So we did a road trip and went to Minnesota, to Taylor Falls, Minnesota. And, um, you know, we had a marvelous time skiing there. They had, you know, 26 runs open. And, you know, so we got to ski. We got to just have a quiet, quiet Thanksgiving, much different than, you know, my previous life. And, um, you know, I, I was even saying, hey, let's just check out and see if there's any wineries around here because, you know, um, Minnesota, you know, different places in the Midwest, they're known for different wineries. Well, I came across the Dancing Dragonfly Winery and I couldn't even believe it was open. And it was, and we went in and we had a delightful time. Um, it turns out that the person who, you know, owns this winery had a dragonfly experience. I write about a similar situation in, in my spiritual fiction, but it was confirmation that, hey, here's another person that kind of experienced the same thing, being circled by dragonflies right. and having a life-changing experience. So I would say with that and so many other experiences, whether it's finding pennies or feathers or red cardinals or people that materialize and then are gone or manifesting things, thinking of something and then boom, it's right in front of you. All of these things just do happen in a slow motion uh, situation yeah. for me. So um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's almost like I'm transported to, to another world. And, you know, I, I at least now have experienced this so much that I, I just accept it when it's happening and I take it in and try to pay attention to as much as I can, you know, but I'm sure I've had some of these things when I was younger and growing up, I just didn't, didn't, right. wasn't aware of it. I didn't make a big deal of it either. It's just, yeah. like, oh, I'm just observing things, right? Right. <laughs> And you might sound crazy to people, you know, right. some people Good. say, well, you know, Good you might, you might have wanted that to happen. So you might have believed that that happened. But luckily, with many of the experiences I've had, there have been other people witnessing it that would say, right. yes, I saw the exact same thing you did. And that's very confirmational. And then I've also sought out um, readings with psychic mediums. And that was something that I never believed in before. And of course, you have to be discerning about, you know, who does the reading, because some of them, you know, aren't necessarily um, really tuned into spirit, but there are many people that are. And um, I've had so much validation with that, because, um, you know, uh, there are things that I have been told by psychic mediums or that were just thoughts that I had or that it were experiences that no one else would know. It's not anything you can, right. you know, research, look up. I've well, never- everybody had one of those or one of the, yeah, right. Right. <laughs> no, no, I've had some experiences that have been kind of really, really life-changing and, and validating yeah. and uh, just kind of opened up my, my world to, you know, wow, there, there is another realm here. I believe that we're, you know, different energies and, you know, it might be simultaneous, you know, at where, where we're, we could be in another plane while we're on this earthly plane. I, I don't quite know. I don't have all the answers, but I'm sure having fun figuring it out. Right, right. Having fun yeah. exploring it all, right? So yeah. and our minds will never know anyway. The minute it thinks it's got to figure it out, it'll realize it doesn't. So <laughs> we right, just get right. to experience all this stuff. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I love that. I mean, and I love um, what you talked about uh, where everything slows down. I think most people have probably experience that the, uh, at least in moments through their lives. Like I, I've experienced that when I, I was almost killed or been run over by a trailer, but we won't get into that story today. Right. Um, car accidents, you know, like right. moments like that. Um, you know, it's just different different times when, when those special magical things happen um can be other times i have met people that i thought were walk-ins of my dad because it just i'm just like that was you get because it's a feeling you get it's like right. this isn't totally real like this is like something else like right. this is like something just dropped in and 
and people think you're crazy or what you're talking about, but it's so palpable and real to, to the person experiencing. You just know there's something to it. And, and, um, you know, and that's why, you know, podcasts like yours are, are so <laughs> meaningful and helpful, you know, not all, it, it's probably got to be very validating for you as well to hear other people's stories. But I think, like I said, our voices matter and to be able to express these things help give permission to other people to say, wow, maybe I did experience something and I can look into that more. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So where can people uh, find out more about you and uh, maybe get a copy of your book and everything? Can you tell them about that? Sure, sure. Well, I like you said, I'm not on social media. I chose uh, the only reason really, even though I know it's in upheaval now, right? But but the 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 reason is I really wanted to focus my energies on on writing, which which I have. And because of that, I've I've been involved in five anthology books. And then I've got, I just finished books two and three of the, the four book series, True Deceit, False Love. Both God Came to My Garage Sale and True Deceit, False Love are available on Amazon and um, on Balboa Press, which is a division of Hay House. That's my publisher as well as Barnes and Noble. So my website um, to find out different events, speaking engagements, book signings, uh, you know, different podcasts that I'm on, that type of thing. It's the title of my spiritual fiction. So it's www.godcametomygaragesale.com. And when you go to that website, you can, you know, check out my author bio or the books that I'm involved in. But I, there's a happenings it's called happenings, the menu tab. And I keep that pretty much up to date with, um, with different things that I'm involved in. So people can kind of follow, but, but the books are very reasonably priced, you know, and, um, uh, you know, so that's where you can find me. It's, you know, um, it's harder for me to get my books here because I live in the Caribbean and, and just that whole kind of, um, you know, mailing packages and that type of thing is a little difficult, but for people that are in the States or even in Europe, um, you know, you can just order it and, and get it within days. And then my book is also in many bookstores, uh, actually in your town of McHenry, Illinois, it's at Temperance Crystals, which is a new little shop in your little downtown. Hmm. Um, yeah. My book is now um, in uh, two spiritual stores in Crystal Lake. Um, you know, so people can find it at, you know, uh, getting out there more and more stores all over the place. That's, yeah, that's, it's out there now. A lot of people are listening that are probably don't know where the heck I live. So, but yeah, it's it's getting out there. There's lots lots of different places. So yeah, yeah, check it out, and I will put the the link to your website too in the um in the notes. So all right, well we've come to the time of the show where I I like to do my my quick tune in on my guests and see whatever is coming through um, in the process. So you ready to receive that? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. I'm excited, yeah. All right, okay. All right, here we go. Marnie, that's, so I'll tune in. One thing about, um, uh, sometimes I just, I just share it the way it comes through often. I mean, it just, uh, yeah, I don't always know what it means instantly, but um, they're saying angel keeper. So um, part of it, it was I just I just just felt like um, this your connection with the angelic realm, you know, the angels, and that yeah, uh, I'm really getting that you're super blessed with even though you've been in all these precarious situations at times, it's like you've always had this protection. Um, and I also feel that this is a protection that um, I sense this is a protection that you can bring to others, you know, the sense of protection, however you want to look at it. But I feel like you can be an angel transmitter to other people so they can feel loved and safe um and protected so so it's really beautiful it's really beautiful so um so that's that's the first thing let me see i usually like to get three different ones Shh. 
Um, I just see like they're just like I always I see so often just your hands come in free. So this is a common sign that I get for a lot of readings and just that you know, showing me your purpose. So it's like as you've broken through levels of inner inner and outer bondage from the past, like mm -hmm. your expression is just getting more, because you've got this ravenous self. You're like, oh, let's go further. Let's do more, you know? Like you're just, ah, I can't get enough, like at times. So it's just like more, you know? And, and but it's not, it's funny. It's not like you know, like people like the the. It's not so much an ego more. It's not like that. It's not like, oh, I gotta have more. And it's more like it's just it's just it's just it's just in you. It's just an energy that just says more. Oh, let's do more. <laughs> let's have more of that. <laughs> so um, it's not a, it's not a, like a negative thing necessarily. It could could be an issue at times, I suppose. But um, but it, it it's strong. Uh, but the expression wants to wants to keep expanding and i feel like they're um yeah so the thing i feel is that you don't want to be tethered to to too much structure um that that feels very like a trap like oh my god i don't want to get trapped in any of that so that's why you keep things free and loose because you feel you can be more like that that bird it can just fly where i want or choose to go right and so I noticed that, but I feel that there may be more opportunities to maybe work within existing structures to, to support and to give to them and to serve through these existing structures of service in the world. Um, so I see something around that. And, and again, uh, these are just brief downloads. Okay, so let me tune in one more thing. Uh, so the sky, the sky's the limit idea. So like uh, just the sense of um, maybe deepening in your connection into the multidimensional realms. Because I, I, you know, I, what you're saying about, you know, I kind of wonder this or that, but the more you get into the multidimensionality of your being, um, whatever that means to you, the more, the more, even for more and more for you that, um, some of the some of this you, your awareness will deepen even more and that you'll increasingly your, your mental factor will lighten even more like the mental factors like wait a minute what about this what about? they'll always be curious but like some of the density i guess is going to drop out and you'll become even more magical you know in terms of like the experiences you get to have mm -hmm. and maybe the experiences you allow you're opening up for others that are hanging out with you you know you can be one of those people that creates magical experiences for others by sitting in maybe in nature or presence with you like wow did you notice that wow did you notice that and you've already had experienced that is my hunch so sure. get together with other people like you together experience things you kind of alluded to that already but like i'm feeling that energy so so you are an awakener in that way that people could be in your field and observing things together with you. Because that's what it is. We're finally observing things. I was thinking about earlier, like Aboriginal people, like people like that, like they experience this stuff all the time. But to us, because of the way we've been conditioned in our mind, we think they're extraordinary, mind-blowing things. They are for us. But if you're in your more natural state, they're just like hey you're paying attention you know <laughs> right right definitely cool. no that was wonderful thank you so much for, sure for tuning thing. in sure thing sure thing and uh so i just want to let everybody know if you'd like to learn more about me you can go to your sacredpurpose.com i do offer energy scan consultations um so if you go there you can apply to uh get a rock your sacred purpose uh energy scan consultation for all your world changing light leaders out there uh, if you want to experience my tuning in for you and helping you guide you on your path and, and your business, ha happy to help you. And then you can also take advantage of my meditate and make money meditation that, you know, provides some of that awakening for you so that the energy frequency of miracles are with money and your service and purpose in the world 
can unfold uh, much more naturally. So check that out at yoursacredpurpose.com. Okay, so Dr. Marnie, as we're concluding here today, do you have any last words to share with the audience? Well, I would just say, you know, we all have challenges in our lives, some big, some small, but that's all part of the journey. And if we choose to handle them with love and goodness and awareness that, you know, we are guided by divine, uh, you will find much peace and joy and harmony. And uh, so, so try to be, uh, try to ground yourself and take time to quiet your mind, to be open to the wonder that is right there for all of us. Yes, yes, yes. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Marty, for coming on today. We're so grateful to have you and um, your beautiful energy and heart. And thank you for everybody for listening in. Keep on tuning in and we'll keep on rocking it here at Spiritual Rockstar Podcast. Till the next time, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thanks. For listening to Spiritual Rockstar Podcast, stay tuned for our next upcoming new episodes each Wednesday and Saturday. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review to help us to serve you best. As a reminder, you can get your free Meditate and Make Money meditation at www.yoursacredpurpose.com to rock your sacred purpose. Goodbye for now, everybody.